So it asks us to determine algebraically if each of these are inverses and then to verify it graphically. So in order to tell something algebraically if it's an inverse, we can write down again, what are the steps for finding the inverse? Inverse function is f inverse of x. What do we do? Step one, is you'll switch x and y, and then step two, you'll solve for y. So in part a, to find out if y equals x minus 6 divided by 3 is the inverse of y equals 3x minus 6, if you start with y equals 3x minus 6, switch the x and the y, and rewrite it as x equals 3y minus 6. If we solve for y, so I'm going to add 6 to both sides, and then divide by 3, add 6 to both sides, divide by 3 equals y, this is the equation of the inverse. And sometimes it's going to ask you to find f inverse of x anytime. I think there's one on your review that says find the inverse of x. Then you would write your final answer with f inverse of x equals x plus 6 divided by 3. Does that match up with the other equation? No, because theirs has a minus sign, right? So they are not. So those two functions are not inverses of each other. If we look at the second one. The second one is a parabola, but there is a restriction on the domain. So that second equation, it's a parabola, but it's only half a parabola. It's only the parabola part where x is bigger than or equal to 0. We want to see if this and this are inverses of each other. So again, I'm going to start with the 1 equation, switch the x and the y, and solve for y. So in order to solve for y when there's a y squared, move the 3 over. That gets us to a negative y squared. In order to get to that, get rid of that negative, we either have to divide by a negative or multiply by a negative. So I'm going to multiply by a negative. And when we square root both sides, we put plus or minus in front. And just because it's negative x plus 3, it's the same as 3 minus x, and that matches more with how they've written it, we're very close. y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 minus x. The way that it's written above, it just says the positive one. But we have to be careful because there was a restriction on the domain. The, restrict, the restriction on the domain is that our x values have to be bigger than or equal to, no, yeah, bigger than or equal to 0. So that means we only have half of the parabola, and when we do the inverse, we're going to only have either the top half or the bottom half. But we have to decide which half are we going to have. Because if we have the top half, they match up and they're inverses. If we have the bottom half, they won't match up and they won't be inverses. So algebraically, yes, sorry. It doesn't, when we're adding and subtracting, the order doesn't matter. Like 2 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 2. It doesn't matter what order it's in. I just rewrote it like that because I knew this one was written that way, just so that it matched up better. But it wasn't. Uh, 
you could, you could write it as negative x plus 3. Okay? So, algebraically, if an inverse switches the x and the y, and originally, originally we were told that x was bigger than or equal to 0, what does that mean on our inverse? Well, if you switch x and y, it would now mean that on our inverse, y has to be bigger than or equal to 0. Oh, that was wonderful. If y is bigger than or equal to 0, this means for this we only have the positive one. Does that make sense? If your y values are only positive, if you're looking at the plus or the minus square root, you'll only have the positive part. So in this one, Now, in part B, they say to verify these things algebraically, I mean, verify them graphically, especially in the parabola one, you're going to find that that's going to be really helpful. But let's do the first one first with the lines. The original line was y equals 3x minus 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Slope of 3, up 3, over 1, up 3, over 1. Here is y equals 3x minus 6. And the second equation was x minus 6 divided by 3. I'm going to take that equation. I'm going to divide the x by 3 and write it as 1 third x. I'm going to take the negative 6 and divide it by 3 and write it as negative 2. What does that mean? That means that we have a y-intercept of negative 2. We go up 1 over 3, up 1 over 3. And that would be the graph. Graphically, are these inverses? If they were inverses, we would have reflected over this line, y equals x. And these places where graphs cross that line would have to be the same on both of them, and they're not. So graphically, we can see this one is not a flip over. Other things that you can use as a check graphically, you see that here, on our green graph, we have the point 0, comma, negative 6. That would mean on our black graph, we should have negative 6, comma, 0, but we do not. So that, that is the way graphically we can see that these ones are not inverses. For the second one, We have our parabola, which is negative x squared plus 3. That's a parabola. The negative is going to flip it down. The plus 3 is going to move it up 3. So that graph would have its vertex at 0, comma, 3, and it would be going down. And there's a restriction on the domain that we only have this part of the parabola. So I'm going to just sort of draw some dots that there was this part of the parabola on that side isn't there. We're just dealing with that positive part. When we do the graph of this, 3 minus x, this is not in the way that we normally graph things. We would normally write it just as we were writing it before with the negative x first and then a plus 3. What kind of transformations do we have here? Flipped over the y. 
And, and then you want to say left three, but this is where the special note comes in, right? If we've got a horizontal reflection and a horizontal translation, we would take one extra step to factor that out, and it's actually moved to the right three. So what does our square root graph look like? Normally it looks like this. It gets flipped over and then moved three to the right. Draw it in green. And goes like that. If we check graphically, is it flipping over this line? It sure looks like it's sharing that point in common. What happened to our starting point of 0, 0,3? We now have, that's a bad 3, 3, 0. Everything appears to have switched properly. So that way we can see graphically that this one did work. Okay, the questions you can do for this one are 7, 8, 11, and 13. I have a little note that 11 and 13 are worded a little bit different, so they're going to make you think a little bit. So 11 and 13 are a little bit thinking questions. <coughs> 